I just took a cheap test and I am 99% sure that there's a lie. I'm excited to have a baby! What? This is unexpected. <gasps> friends welcome back to my channel as you can tell by the title of this video this isn't gonna be the most cheerful video that I've ever made but I thought it would be appropriate to come on here and share with you guys uh, give you a life update on where we're at obviously if you read the title we were expecting which resulted in a miscarriage at seven and a half weeks and I just wanted to kind of recap the good and then the not so good I wanted to throw a little disclaimer out here before we get started as I talk about the things that led up to the miscarriage, there may be a little bit of TMI thrown in there. So if you have a younger child watching, you just might wanna consider that as we get into this video. But yeah, I want to share our pregnancy experience and our miscarriage experience in hopes that maybe it could encourage or help somebody out there. Yeah, let's go ahead and just start from the very beginning. I think it's important to celebrate life no matter how long it was. And so that's what I'm hoping to do today. Okay, so we are gonna rewind back to December. For those of you who are new to our story, we have been trying a little over three and a half years for a child. We've done several IUIs. We had pursued fertility treatment and then we took a break. We kind of just got burnt out. Anybody who's gone through fertility treatment knows that you kind of reach a point where you just feel completely and utterly burnt out and that's where we were. So we decided in 2019 to kind of just take a break, obviously still continue to try naturally, but not really pursue a medical treatment at that time. So that's what we did all the way up until December when we felt a piece about trying again. For those of you who haven't been following our journey all that long, I have PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome, but essentially my body has trouble ovulating on its own. So we had used some fertility drugs previously to help induce ovulation and we'd had mixed results. We decided to try Clomid again and this is kind of what that looked like. I don't know if anybody will ever see this vlog minus myself, but we're starting fertility treatment again and I wanted to document the process. We're trying Clomid again this round. We're also adding in dexamethasone and I'm getting an HSG done this cycle. We're kind of excited. So it's December 24th, 2019. 2020 obviously is a new year. We're excited to try this again. 2019 was so rough. We're feeling a piece about trying this again. So cycle one of 2020. Fingers crossed this is a good one. We just went into it very hopeful. On cycle day 21, I actually did get a positive ovulation test. After ovulation, obviously you have the two week wait. And during this time, I was having some symptoms where I was 99% sure I was pregnant. So almost two years ago, we did end up conceiving on Clomid as well. And I had a lot of the same symptoms. One of the biggest things that happened that I remember specifically from last time was I had this intense, sharp pain on my left side that almost took my breath away and that same exact thing happened when I got pregnant previously. And so at that point, I was almost certain that I was probably gonna be pregnant this cycle and I was so hopeful. And 11 days past ovulation, I ended up getting a positive pregnancy test and this is what that looks like. Keep in mind, we have been struggling with infertility for a while and so it was such a joyous moment for me. I just took a cheap test and I am 99% sure that there's a lie. Following the positive pregnancy test, I was so over the moon and shocked because I actually took it 8 p.m. at night. So for those of you who are in this world, you know that you're supposed to take it in the morning if it's before your missed period to give you a better result. But I got a pretty clear result at nighttime. So I was over the moon excited. Um, I ended up waiting until the next day to tell David. 
I tried to think of a fun way to tell him and I couldn't really think of anything because I just wanted to tell him. So what I ended up doing is I told him that I was filming a day in the life vlog and answering some of your questions and that I needed him to help answer them. So here is what that looked like. What are we most excited about for 2020? Is there anything in particular that you're excited about? I'm always excited about traveling, but 2020 I'm excited about not dying because in 2019 I was pretty deathly ill. I felt like I was dying and it seems like in the last couple months I've made a lot of progress so I'm not asking for much in 2020. I want to be healthy and I'd like to spend time with people I love. Sounds cliche but that's about it. It's a good answer babe. Thanks. Yeah and I would say the same thing like I'm glad David's healthy. I'm excited to travel. We're going to San Diego so that's fun and I'm excited to have a baby! What? This is unexpected. <laughs> How accurate is that thing? I've taken four. And they're all the same? That's pretty good. Four, four, that's 400%, I think. Hey. Well, I thought you were overly concerned with me answering that question. Sorry for not having a big reaction. I don't do big reactions. Are you excited? That was such a special moment, one that I will never forget. Um, after telling him we were expecting, I called my doctor's office. They wanted me to come in for some early blood work just to confirm everything, so I did that. And at that moment, they told me that my progesterone was super high, and usually that means that there's a good chance for multiples, which I don't know if that's true, but that's what they told me. That planted a seed in the back of my mind that I shouldn't be shocked if we found out that it was multiples. So this was on a Wednesday that I found out this information. On Friday, we were actually away thrifting and I was filming this thrift haul here. And that night when we went to dinner, I was walking and I just felt something and I knew that it felt like my period started. And I went into the restroom and there was blood and I just like was on the verge of tears. We were in a public restaurant so I was trying to hold it back. I was just so confused and so sad thinking that I got my hopes up and then it ended so quickly. We debated on if we should go to the emergency room but at that point you're so early and there's nothing that they can really do so we just decided to stay at home, wait it out and honestly I did not sleep well that night. It's like my whole dreams came crashing down and I was 99% sure that we had miscarried at that point. So um, the blood did increase and I was like, there's no way that we didn't miscarry. So um, on Monday, we ended up going into the doctor and they did my blood work just to confirm um, that we did in fact miscarry. And the next day I got a call and they told me that my numbers had actually risen and I was just so surprised thinking there's no way. So at that point they asked me to come in the next day to do an ultrasound and this is the first time that we found out that we were having identical twins. Everything looked good. I mean we were so early at this point, still right around five and a half weeks. It was too early to hear heartbeats but we were so excited. Uh, the doctor did say with identical twins you are at a higher risk. Um, just because they are sharing one sack and so she said a lot of times at this point this early on one will end up um, vanishing which they call the vanishing twin syndrome I believe so she said don't get your hopes up yet with twins um, you never know you're so early but of course we couldn't help but be excited unfortunately I did not film any of that appointment I think I was just so much in shock Fast forward, I continued to spa on and off, but I w did some research online and a lot of people said that they had that, especially with twin pregnancies, and that it was fairly common. So I wasn't too worried because it wasn't a lot, it was just very, very little. So when we had initially called, they had set me up for an uh, initial appointment at six and a half weeks. We got in early at five and a half weeks just because we thought that something was wrong. So we still had our six and a half week appointment coming up and this is when we got the news that there were two heartbeats and everything looked great. Here we are in the doctor's office that day. Is it too early for a heartbeat? Oh no, they both have heartbeats. How do you feel? I'm excited. I'm relieved. I feel so happy. <laughs> David, there's two little beads in there. Okay, following this appointment, we were so hopeful. The doctor told us, usually after you hear the heartbeats, the risk of miscarriage goes down a lot. 
with our first loss we never heard the heartbeat so we were so so hopeful at this point thinking that they were um, both the same size both the heartbeats were great the doctor said everything looked great and we were just over the moon excited my parents already knew we were expecting at this point because when I thought I had miscarried I had actually just text everybody saying hey please keep us in your prayers I'm pretty sure we just miscarried um, and so they were all like on edge wanting to know what was going on so after the pregnancy was confirmed by the doctor's office we did end up telling everybody that we were expecting but we had not told them that we were expecting twins so our plan was that Saturday following my appointment my side of the family was getting together for a February birthday party because my sisters and my dad all have birthdays in February so we thought we would just get together for one big celebration and I thought this would be a perfect time to go ahead and tell them that I was expecting twins so I put together an announcement video which had some of these clips that I've shown you guys in this video but they were all at our house and at the very end we announced in the video that we were having twins and I just wanted to share their reactions because it is something that I will never forget is it too early for a heartbeat oh no they both have heartbeats what oh no they both have heartbeats Wait, you're having twins That was a, such a special day and we were planning on telling David's parents a few days following that but unfortunately things took a turn for the worse. So this was on a Saturday. Um, on a, that Sunday I started getting a lot of cramping and they told me that with twins you know your uterus is expanding and you could expect more cramping and more spotting but I just felt like my period was coming on and I just didn't feel normal. I had this gut feeling that something was wrong and um, I went to the restroom and when I wiped there was fresh blood and I just knew at that point that something was not okay. So this was on a Sunday. Of course my doctor's office was closed. I called them Monday morning and they got me right in and we did an ultrasound and when she did the ultrasound, you could see the babies right away. They had grown. It was crazy to see how much they had grown in a week. So at this point, they're both seven and a half weeks. They're both measuring on track. Um, but I could tell something was wrong because the first time we saw the heartbeats, she found them right away. And this time, she just was pretty quiet and she kept looking. And I eventually said, you know, do you see any heartbeats? And she said, well, I don't right now, but I'm still looking and that's just kind of when my heart dropped and I just knew something was wrong and David came up to the table where I was and he just um, put his arm around me and she said that she was going to go get the other doctor because she couldn't see any heartbeats but you know sometimes it's just difficult they're still pretty small but I knew that first time she saw them so quickly that um, there had to be something wrong so the other doctor came in and this was the doctor that confirmed our miscarriage previously and I, I think I have PTSD from going to this doctor's office because all these memories came rushing back but he came in there and he did the ultrasound and he confirmed that he didn't see anything either we were just in shock um, everything looked so good the week before and we were so confident with the heartbeats being so strong but it's like, part of me had a gut feeling that something wasn't right. Actually, I guess I should say the night before I went into my ultrasound that day, I had a dream that we were at the doctor's office and they told us that they couldn't find a heartbeat. And it was just like, um, I don't know, preparing me for what was to come. After you get that news, you just don't really feel like seeing anybody. Uh, my sister works there so I walked past her office and I just couldn't talk or say anything <laughs> but she did like thumbs up or thumbs down and I just said thumbs down and I walked out uh, this clip right here was when we first came home from the doctor's office after getting our bad news and we were trying to process everything David took the day off work and we were just laying on the couch and yeah we didn't really have many words but this is where we were at 
This is us puffy eyes and all. Um, I guess we found out a few hours earlier that the babies no longer have heartbeats and I think we're just processing it. Don't really know what to say. I have good friends that got me these pretty flowers and we're doing respite care tonight so we're gonna have to figure out a way to look presentable so we don't scare her. Um, how do you feel? Um, I don't have too many feelings right now. I think we both just kind of feel numb. For me, I think I went into it a little less optimistic just because I know how it felt to get my hopes crushed um, the first time. And it was sad. But I just like keep reminding myself there's something wrong with the babies. That's usually your body's way of responding. And it happens a lot. It just has taken me two years to get pregnant again up until this point and you start to wonder how long is it gonna take me again if it even happens. At first we thought it was just the fact that I didn't ovulate and that's what has been so difficult but now we've lost three children and it's hard to not have answers. Um, I wanna kind of, I guess, wrap up this video by just saying in the midst of all these trials, we've had so many people reach out to comfort us. One day we had um, the flower delivery guy stop by three different occasions and we got, I think like six or seven deliveries of flowers. And it just shows um, how many people care and it has meant the world to us. I've received countless messages on Instagram after sharing our news and although I haven't yet responded back to every single one, they have made the healing process so much easier just to know that people care and even if it's a stranger on the internet you don't know how much that positively impacts our hearts and like David and I just sat down and looked at all those comments and we were just filled with gratitude and knowing that God is with us in this journey there are so many people who have been encouraging us and texting us and um, praying for us and we can feel all of those prayers. I just wanted to share this video in hopes of saying if you are going through this, you are not alone. For those of you who aren't going through it but you may know somebody who is, the smallest note of encouragement can mean so much to somebody who is struggling. And maybe you're going through it and you feel like everybody around you is pregnant and announcing that they're pregnant or, or taking maternity pictures. It just seems like your whole life is surrounded by people that have the one thing that you want so much. I know it can be so difficult, but I like to always remind myself that even though it doesn't look like it, everybody has struggles. Just to remind you that even through different trials, we can still be there to encourage and love on people who are going through hard times. And so we have received so much of that this week and I want to in return pour that out to other people who are facing difficult times as well. People have shared Bible verses with us which have been so encouraging and I just wanted to read the one that I shared on my Instagram post that my dear friend Emily had sent me. And it's Psalm 34, 17, the Lord is our strength. When the righteous cry out for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all of their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflicted of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. And that verse has just been so encouraging to us that we can cry out to God and know that he hears our struggles and he hears our cries. And God is able to deliver us out of these trials. Sometimes it seems like these trials go on and on and on forever, but I have to believe that God has a bigger plan in all of this. And I don't, I can't see the plan right now. Right now we're just a little bit broken and a little bit bruised, but I hope one day we can look back on it and we can see how God orchestrated our whole lives and how um, this moment of suffering was not in vain it was not for nothing but something beautiful came out of it and that is my hope in all of this and whether that be just to be able to encourage somebody out there who is watching this video my suffering is used to positively impact somebody's life who desperately needs encouraging then the struggle was not for no reason and that brings so much gladness to my heart so 
anyway from the bottom of my heart again thank you to everybody who has reached out to us um this has been a hard trial but we know we're not alone we're not the only ones who have gone through this we know that we will get through it so thank you guys so much for watching thank you for your support your encouragement your love you mean so much to us and yeah i'll see you guys in my next video bye